got uh, Lisa Grande with us now, who is the United Nations Humanitarian Coordinator for Yemen, joining us via Skype from Sana'a. Look, Lisa, how, uh, how have you been able to coordinate things in the last few days, knowing that this is coming, knowing it's happening now, making sure your staff are safe, but also trying to do your job as well? For the past several days, the major effort of the United Nations has been trying to convince all of the parties to the conflict that the better option is to choose the path to peace, to get to the negotiating table, and to start seriously discussing how to end the war and cease hostilities. At the same time, the humanitarians in the United Nations, working with our frontline partners, have been preparing contingency plans and pre-positioning supplies in Hudaydah. We have dozens of UN staff who are on the ground right now in the city. We're going to stay there. We have no intention of leaving. And in fact, today, as the assault started, as there was naval shelling and aerial bombardment, a World Food Program vessel contracted by the World Food Program was offloading food at the port, even as the shelling was continuing. That's because we are absolutely committed to doing our jobs. There are millions of lives at stake, and that's why we are staying here and delivering. Uh, but does that mean, the presumably means the lives of your staff are at stake as well. It's, it's admirable, it's amazing that you are staying there to do that, but must be incredibly dangerous. The United Nations has a very robust security management system in place. We study the threats, we study the risks, and we put in place steps that mitigate those risks and mitigate those threats. This is what humanitarians do. We work in difficult situations. We're there to make sure that civilians survive wars and to help ensure that they receive the assistance that they need. That means that we are often working in dangerous situations. We take security very seriously. That's why we do the analysis and we put in place mitigation measures. The staff who are in Hudeda are doing heroic work. We told the Yemeni people, we told the authorities, we're not leaving. We're going to stay there and do everything possible to make sure that the people who depend on us receive the aid that they need. As I said, today, during the bombardments, we had the World Food Program vessel docked at the berths and food was being unloaded. We're talking a lot about what's coming into Hodeida and the work that's going on at the port there. What about getting out, uh, as in getting the aid and the food out of there? Because it's, I mean, there's so many places in Yemen which need this help. How risky, how dangerous is that actually trying to move the aid and the food onwards? You know, the, the significance of the port who, who data cannot be underestimated. It is literally the lifeline for the country. As you said, 90% of basic commodities come through that port. 70% of all humanitarian assistance comes through that port. Right now, three quarters of the entire population of Yemen needs some form of humanitarian assistance and protection. And the bulk of that assistance comes through this single entry point. If Hudaydah is cut off for any period of time, those lives are at risk. This is why the United Nations has alerted all the parties to the conflict and said, please, no matter what happens, that port has to remain open and those supplies need to keep moving. If they stop moving, we are facing mass casualties. Mr. Grande, you are and your team doing an uh, incredible job by the sounds of things. Thank you so much for taking the time for us. Thank you.